What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you are having a great day so far. Uh, this week is going by pretty quick. I do apologize for not putting out a video yesterday. I'm going to be honest with you. I was going to do a review, but I was so damn tired yesterday. I fell asleep right around the time GH actually came on because I was up all night the previous night. Um, Monday night, I had went out. Where did I go? I went to Buffalo Wild Wings Monday night. Then I went to the gym. And I was in the gym literally till like 3.30 in the morning. Came home like around 4 a.m. I didn't go to sleep none that day. I was literally up all day that day, all night that night. So I was bone tired by the time like GH even came on. Like I just laid down before I knew it, I was asleep. <laughs> I probably didn't wake up till probably like 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Like I was exhausted. But uh. Yeah, so this episode, hmm, it, was, it was decent. It was okay. It wasn't spectacular. I, It's obvious to me what's going on with Mike. Mike clearly has some type of early Alzheimer's or dementia. I wouldn't say early because Mike is in his 70s. So he does, I, I believe he got dementia because he don't know how that money got into his apartment. He thought that he delivered the $10,000, but Sonny found the 10000 in a cigar box. I said his old ass probably put it there and forgot he put it there. He got dementia. That man, he's losing his marbles. It's clear. Because I remember yesterday, when I did look at yesterday's episode, I actually watched it this morning. He barely even remembered Carly's name. I was like, yeah, he got dementia. Because how you could forget Carly's name? And him and Carly were so cool. So for him to pretty much like forget Carly's name, like he started to forget her name. I was like, yep, he has dementia. That old man is losing his marbles. I feel bad for him, though. Um, I feel like he was hostile towards Sonny about going back to Port Charles. I think what he's hiding from Sonny and what he's hiding from um, Rita, his girlfriend, is he. I think he knows that he has Alzheimer's. He knows that he's starting to lose his memory and stuff. I think that's what he, he he's trying to hide it from them. Because I remember on The Young and the Restless, they kind of did a similar storyline with the late Jean Cooper before she died, when she was Catherine Chancellor. You notice that Catherine started having memory loss. And she was afraid that she was starting to lose her mind. Like, she was afraid, not lose her mind, but she was afraid that she was starting to have Alzheimer's. And uh, came come to find out, she actually had a brain tumor. That's the reason her, her memory was going. But I actually like this storyline for Mike because they did a similar storyline with uh, Caroline Brady on Days of Our Lives where she started having dementia. Um, like, I, you know what? As boring as some of these episodes be, I kind of like some of the storylines GH is putting out because I don't like the execution of them, but I do like the, the outline of the storyline because a lot of this is what I've been through in life and what I've seen because my great grandmother my great grandmother she died two years ago she died around January February of 27 2016 and uh you know she was 96 years old we thought that she was gonna make it to 100 because that woman has been around for a long time but her mind you know her memory started to go but for one thing I do know even though she was losing her memory, she always remembered who I was. Always. She never forgot who I was. Um, but her memory started to go and stuff like that. You know, so this kind of reminds me of it. You know, when I see, like, storylines like this and stuff, it reminds me a lot about that. Um, cause I keep trying to tell people, man, I'm, I'm young, but I, I've seen a lot in, in, this, in, in my lifetime. So far, I've seen a lot. So I can relate to a lot of storylines that they put out and stuff like that because I've been through a lot of it, you know, death in the family, family members having, uh, you know, memory loss. I, I've seen a lot like it's crazy. Um, so, yeah, I think that's what he's trying to hide from Sonny. You know, I feel like he's trying to hide it from Rita because I was a little confused by Rita because she was telling Sonny. Oh, we need your help. We're in trouble. She was like, I'll tell you, we'll tell you whatever you want to know. 
But she kept saying we're in trouble, but she wasn't telling him what the trouble was. Because every time Sonny would ask her a question, she would say, I don't know. But how are you going to tell him that you're going to tell him whatever he wants to know, but every time he asks you a question, you keep saying, I don't know. Like, that was the confusing part. I'm like, so she keeps saying that Mike doesn't tell her what's going on. So how do you know that you're in trouble? If he's not telling you what the trouble is, how do you know that you're in trouble? Is it some type of gut instinct? I don't know. It just didn't make sense. <laughs> Because I don't know why they wrote it like that for her to say, we're in trouble. We'll tell you whatever you want to know. But then when he asks you a question, all your answers are, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So how are you going to help you if he don't know what the hell going on and you yourself don't know what's going on? But you're in trouble. What kind of trouble? I don't know. Well, that narrows it down, doesn't it? But I do think that's what he hiding, though. That's exactly what he hiding. But I'm glad, Sonny, you know, he paid off the debt. He... Let Mike and Rita keep the ten thousand dollars. Um, they could take whatever vacation they want in the near future. Um, but you could see the look on Mike's face. He definitely looks scared. Like, I think he knows that he's losing his marbles. But um, anyway, Sam and Drew they talking about going to Thailand, Thailand, whatever. I call it Thailand because <laughs> the way it's spelled, even though the H is silent, but still. Um, so they want to go to Thailand. Um. Am I saying it right? Whatever. But anyway, I always want to go somewhere too, like out of the country, you know, different places. I I, I, I want to travel, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I want to see the world, you know? I'm like that too. Like, I definitely want to go to Hawaii. I've been to Miami. Miami is nice. It's nice. Um, You can go to a club in Miami and be there for 24 hours straight. That's crazy. Like, the nightclubs in Miami literally never closes. Um... LA, I definitely want to go to LA. Europe, I definitely want to go to Europe. Paris, um, just a lot of places. Texas, everywhere. I just want to go. You know what I'm saying? Fiji, um, Costa Rica, Bora Bora. I definitely want to go to Bora Bora. I heard Bora Bora is so nice. It's a lot of places. I got a lot of places on my bucket list I want to go to. Um, I'll get there one day. So anyway, yeah, they're talking about going to Thailand for their honeymoon or whatever. I thought they already went on their honeymoon, but didn't they have to come back early or whatever because of phase on? But I thought, they... whatever. Anything to get them off my screen is fine with me. Um, Ned is he was he was slick. Ned was definitely he was slick. He came up in there trying to give off some little phony little campaign sounding speech to drew about old family need to stick together as soon as he said that i knew exactly where he was going with this he wants drew's endorsement from aurora media and he wants drew to vote for him but i like the fact that drew and sam are staying neutral on this because sam is you know alexis's daughter and drew and ned are cousins so i think it's fair that they stay neutral they don't get involved you know and it's not right for them to endorse either one, seeing as how they're family, and it would come under public scrutiny. You know, of course the public would be like, oh, y'all playing favorites, and this, that, and the third, because that's your family. That's exactly how it would come out. That's exactly how it would come out. Um, Lulu doing a story on Ned or whatever. You know, she could do that if she want. Like Drew said, they're not going to block him from getting endorsement or publicity from... Port Charles Press and all the other media stuff that they own, you know, that's fine, but they're not going to personally endorse him, though. They're not going to let the company endorse him, which is understandable because I wouldn't do it either. Um, so now Peter comes to Drew and tells him that he's resigning, which is obvious because we already know now that Faison's dead, he wants to cut and run because he has no reason to stay in Port Charles now. But we all know why he wants to stay in Port Charles. Why, I mean, we already know who his mama is. Especially when he was talking to Lulu and Lulu wanted to know more about his backstory, how he talked about his father, sent him off to boarding schools. He never knew his mother. His brother died before they could know each other. I said, yep, we know who your mom is. It was I hate when the show tried to be so predictable, like be a little unpredictable here. Stop giving out clues and hints and stuff, because for me, I try not to read spoilers, but it's like during the show, the show itself is a spoiler. <laughs> Because they pretty much hint around and tell you this, that, and the third. So you pretty much figure it out quite quickly. Which is dumb. Because it's like, stop going the, the predictable route. I like to be unpredictable. You know, that's how I like to be. 
Like when I do a fantasy show or something, I write it so that way you know you never know which way I'm gonna go. You know what I'm saying? You don't know who I'm gonna kill off. You don't know which way I'm gonna go. I like that. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I would write it because I like it. It keeps people wanting more, and that's the whole point of a show. That's the point of a movie. If you want to come out with a sequel, make them want more. Make them tune in every day at two o'clock, three o'clock, whatever time zone they're on. You know what I'm saying? Make them do that. That's what I like. I think it's dope. If you just be unpredictable. I know it's hard to do when you got spoilers out there, but even with the spoilers, you can still make it unpredictable. You know what I'm saying? Because the spoilers doesn't give you the answers. It just gives you the outline of what's to come. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't really tell you what's going to happen. Um, what the conversations are going to be like. It doesn't tell you all that. It just gives you the outline. But when they're doing the actual storyline and you're seeing it on TV, the problem is they hint at it. They give it away. Stop doing that. Be unpredictable. I'm telling you. It'll give you better ratings. People will clamor. They will tune in every day. Go a different route with things. You know, stop being so obvious all the time because then people figure it out months in advance and that's not good. <laughs> you don't want people to figure it out two, three months before the storyline escalates. You know what I'm saying? Because then they already know and then it becomes anticlimactic. You know what I'm saying? That's the one thing I hate about any storyline. You build it up. We see it play out for six months, five months. And then when it's time to come out, it's so the, the, the reveal is anticlimactic because we already knew five months ago. So, you know, be unpredictable with it. But, um. Yeah, so Lulu, she's a fool. I try to like Lulu. I really do. But she been she been getting on my nerves for a while. <laughs> it's like hush. Just Lulu, write your articles and keep Nathan's name out your mouth, please. Respect the deceased. Um that's another thing I'm kinda angry about. I feel like even though Nathan Pavey left the show, the writers could have put him in a coma. I'd rather they put him in a coma than kill him off. You know what I'm saying? Because then what if he wants to come back later? Then you have to figure out a way to either bring him in as a new character or resurrect him from the dead. And I hate back from the dead storyline, especially if you do it too often, because it gets it cheapens everything that we're seeing now. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like they should just put him in a coma, let Maxie visit him every now and then. You know what I'm saying? Then one day when he comes back, take him out the coma. They did it with Michael. When, you know, he was in a coma for a year, they recasted the role and boom, he woke up. That's what they should do. It's the easiest way. You know, especially when it's a fan favorite character, you don't want to kill them off because then you got to figure out a way to bring them back. It's like, come on, putting them in a coma is the best way. You know, let them be in a coma for a year or two. When Ryan Pavey wants to come back or he's essential to the show again, bring him back. Easiest way. Better route. Um... Nathan, no, I can't really see them recasting the role of Nathan. I can't see it. If they do recast the role of Nathan, I know the perfect person to play. Robert uh, Scott Wilson, who, um, did I say his name right? Rob Scott Wilson. He was on Days of Our Lives as Ben, um, ben Rogers. So, and he used to be on All My Children as Pete Cortland. So, I think he's the perfect person to play Nathan. In a recast, of course. You know, if you can't get Ryan Pavey, go with Rob Scott Wilson best choice um so anyway peter he's gonna get found out because that's why he trying to leave poor charles now because he already know in the back of his mind jason is on his tail already he already know um and from judging from the preview speaking of jason it look like jason getting a new spot tomorrow i can't wait to see it i don't think it's gonna be better than a penthouse though but we'll talk about that tomorrow um, I could see why people were a little pissed with Anna today, you know, Nina and Lisa and stuff like that, because they're still obviously grieving the loss of Nathan. They're planning his funeral and Anna comes in there talking about Heinrich. They don't want to talk about that. You know what I'm saying? They just want to be left in peace right now. So I can understand why they're hostile towards her, even though they're always nasty to Anna, but. What I want to know is, how the hell does Valentino know Anna had a son with Faison? How did he know that? Because the smirk on his face was hilarious to me. But he also kind of looked guilty when the camera panned on his face. He looked guilty about something. Like, what is his role in all this? Because I know these Cassidines be knowing everything. How does he know she had a son with Faison? That's what, I, I, I hope we get answers on that tomorrow because I was intrigued. When he said, your son, I was like, how the hell he know that? I was like, okay, I guess secrets don't stay secrets with Cassidines. 
Because you can't lie to a Cassidine. <laughs> they know everything. Like, it's crazy how much they be knowing. Helena, Victor Cassidine, Stavro, Stefan, they all knew everything. Like, it's crazy how much they knew. Um, They just kept they, they ear to the ground, like, because they just knew everything. It's crazy. So, it's funny to me how Valentin knew about that. Because I was like, how did he know? Lisa didn't even know. So, how you know? And Lisa was around Faison all the time. So, pretty much all the time she was around Faison. So, how did Valentine know Anna was the mother, but Lisa don't know? That's crazy. Um, I am getting so sick of Sam and him coming in Julian Bar talking crap about him all the time. Then why are you at his bar? Like, I don't get it. Like, if you don't like him that much, let me tell you something. If I go into somebody's establishment and it's somebody I know I don't like, first of all, I'm not even going to stay. I'm just going to get up, turn around, and leave and go somewhere else, or better yet, I'm not going to go there, period, if I know the person I don't like owns the place, I'm not going to dine there, why put money in that person's pocket, no, I'm not, I'm going to go somewhere else, that's not the only bar in town, it's not the only restaurant in town, and the floating rib was probably closer to them anyway, so why not go there, like, just didn't make sense to me, why go to somebody's establishment that you don't like, that's stupid, Jim Harvey is a sleazy slime ball. He is as sleazy as they get. I'm telling you right now. That man puts the the the, the slee in sleaze. Like seriously. Like everything about him just looks slimy. Like you you know, when you when you do business with somebody like him or you're even in the presence of somebody like him, you just feel like you need a shower afterwards cuz you just feel dirty even talking to him. Like he just makes me itch. Um and, of course, Ned is doing business with him. I'm like, of course, Ned. Of course you are. Ned, you're about to be judged because of the company you keep. I'm just letting you know. I'm just saying, Ned, you're already on my bad side, but it's about to get worse. Um. So, anyway, Julian and Curtis pretty much figured out that when Aunt Stella got mugged, the mugging wasn't a random mugging. They knew it was on purpose because she's been running around trying to get people to vote, trying to get people on her side and stuff like that, voicing her opinions and you know the developers and stuff like that, they don't like people like that. You know what I'm saying? That's making causing a ruckus. So somebody set that up for her to get mugged. And I'm pretty sure that it was Jim Harvey. Jim Harvey definitely had something to do with it. When Julian Barr got that brick thrown through the window, Jim Harvey. I'm pretty sure. Because Jim Harvey's still trying to get Julian to sell that bar. But Julian keep telling him he's not selling. So it ain't happening. But um, anyway, this was a decent episode. It was okay. Nothing special. But uh, I hope you all enjoy. Hit the comment section. Let me know how you felt. And I will see you all tomorrow. Peace.